Not yet, Mickey. Uh, <laughs> Not nah. yet. Mickey, how good? How, That's ridiculous with that. Like, you, you never look bad. Nah, you never look bad. Mickey, Tom. how good does it feel for winning your 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 team's third championship tonight? It's unbelievable. I mean, just when you consider where we were on Tuesday when those yellow ropes came out. The low that we all felt. I mean, I, I couldn't. I mean, it couldn't be any lower. I mean, we thought it was done, and and to to be where we were on Tuesday night with 25 seconds or whatever was left, to where we are now is just incredible roller coaster. Well, you know, Mickey, in that game, that the statistic that came out is that there's been 122 teams with the lead. I'm being reiterated. Uh, yeah. By, <laughs> by your wife. The 122 times the team had a five point or more lead with 20 to 30 seconds left, 122 and 0 until Tuesday night. Yeah, so it made it even more amazing. Not, you know, a lot of the media criticized some of the fans for leaving, but the NBA decided the game was over. I mean, they brought the ropes out, yes. you know? So if the NBA decided the, rope, the, the game was over, I guess some of our fans thought it was too. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous to talk about, a, a, you know, a few fans leaving game six when there was so much unforgettable basketball in game six. And by winning game seven and, and your third world championship, now you've basically immortalized game six and game seven. Yes. It's going to be something that Heat fans for the next 50 years are going to look back on, remember, and rejoice every time you think of these last two games of this championship series. Oh, it's, going to, it's, a, it's going to be a classic. I mean, it's going to be shown over and over and over and over again. You know, that, that the whole thing with the fans, I, I, I just want to sh give my appreciation to the fans. I mean, you know, I, 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 I was to a bunch of road games during the playoffs, and ev every team, the same thing happens. The only difference between what happened on, in virtually every city around the country is we came back. That's right. If, the, yeah. if we hadn't come back, nobody would have yeah, said the yeah, right. word. Yep. Right? How, how did it feel to you with the national media always, you know, with every loss, on every, with, every, with the result of every game, there's an overreaction by fans and media. But every time the Heat lost in the conference finals and finals, you heard, break up the Heat, it's not working. How about the validation? <laughs> There you you can't go. beat kisses from the Ooh. wife and daughter after a championship. <laughs> but, Mickey, how does it make you feel about the franchise you, you and Pat Riley have built, this team you've put together, three straight trips to the finals, and now two championships in a row? You know, I had, I had the question um, in the locker room. But I got swarmed by media, and I normally don't do a lot of media, but I had a few glasses <laughs> of champagne. You're so allowed. So I did. <laughs> so I did. And um, they asked me if we would have lost tonight, would it have been a failure? And I said, you know, one of the franchises I respect more than any other is, is, is the San Antonio Spurs and what they've accomplished in 15 years. They never accomplished back-to-back -back finals. You know, it, it, yes, they had four championships. It was a remarkable feat over a tremendous... But they never got the back-to-back -back finals. We, we, Even if we lost, we would have gone to three finals. One, it would have been a disappointment, no question. But it wouldn't have been a failure. No, like no any way. Matter. I agree with you. There's no way that would have happened. Right. Uh, it, it's, I'll bet you, Ted, your dad is smiling down now. Absolutely. Just uh, happy as can be with something that he was the patriarch of. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's... Uh, was it? It's unbelievable. It's like, it really is. It's like, it's like a dream, you know? <laughs> it is a dream. You know, but you don't have to I wake yourself up. It's real. <laughs> you know, a stat that, that astounded me when we won our second was only 10 NBA teams have ever won more than one championship. Uh, and, and when I heard that, I said, only 10 NBA teams out of the 30 teams in the league? Only, yeah. And I said, how many have won more than two? I said, five. So we're now in a group of six. Uh, only, yeah, only okay. five have won back-to-back -back championships. Now six, baby. Now six. And only, only, f only five had won more than two in the history of their franchises. And, yeah, and that, franchises that's why, like yeah. New York and the franchises that have yeah, been they, around forever. Since 1946. Right. Yeah. Won't, have, have, so we're one of six <laughs> franchises that are 30 in the league that have won three, and hopefully we're not going to stop at three. So. <laughs> Mickey, how good did it feel? for you to watch Dwayne Wade, who you've seen grow and mature into a superstar over the last 10 years, and LeBron James, who left a lot, took a lot to come here to win multiple championships, the games those two had in Game 6 and Game 7 and the series they both had. You know, when, when, we put the, when the Big Three was put together, we, t we talked a lot about surrounding him with, with, with great guys. And, 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 you know, we knew Dwayne was a big-time player and LeBron was a big-time player. And, so, and Chris, too, although he didn't, never had an opportunity in Toronto to show a lot from the standpoint of achievements, but we knew he was a big-time player. But then we, we, we tried to bring guys like Mike Miller, Shane Battier, um, Ray Allen, Guys that are are not not only quality people on and off the court, but big game players. 
and Ray proved it in Game 6, and Shane proved it in Game 7. Well, we want to talk to you about Shane. You have great ties to the Duke program. Your son Nicholas went to Duke, but Shane, who was such a big part of the playoffs last year, I think he had 45 threes in last year's postseason run. Coming into this game, he had six threes in the first six games, and we watch him be a hero tonight going six of eight from downtown. I, I, I'll tell you a story that uh, I can't believe was true, but it is true. I was at shoot-around today, and wa watching the guys, I was sitting with Pat, and I, I turned to Pat, I said, I really am happy that Shane hit three out of four threes last game. He said, why? I said, because once Shane starts hitting threes, he doesn't stop. And I said, I got a feeling he's going to have a big game tonight. And man, what did he hit his first five? Yes, he did. Yeah. Coach Bolster had it with Mike Miller last year. You had it with Shane this year, and you saw him do it. Shane too. was in the, one of the worst slumps I've ever seen, but he had that last year, too, earlier in the season. But when he got going last year, he really got going, and I just had a good feeling after game six that he'd gotten over that hump. Once he saw the ball go through a couple of times, Oh, man, Took a dookie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Mickey, you, you and Pat Riley stay in the background. You, you deflect credit, but none of these championships would have happened. The big three would not have come together without your ownership and Pat Riley's leadership. Talk about the work at the top of the organization that, that, that you and Pat have been able to do over the last 17 and 18 years, but especially over these last few years. I mean, you know, the focus is on me and, and Pat, and, but it's, you know, it's, it's everybody. It's Andy Ellisberg. It's Nick. It's, it's Eric Woolworth. It's Mike McCullough. I mean, it's, it's a really, really first-class, great organization of guys who are totally committed to putting out a great product, whether it's a product that wins games or a product that just entertains people. Um, they've done a, an absolute great job. And it's a shame that, you know, Pat and to some degree me uh, get a little bit more focused than some of the other guys. But, but believe me, they put in a whole lot more work. <laughs> Well, it starts at the top. Congratulations, Mickey. Your third championship in eight years, back-to-back. -back. Uh, we know this has been an elite organization. Now the whole world knows it. Congratulations. Why don't you continue to work the room? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Our favorite person. Numero uno. Absolutely. All right. We thank Mickey Harris.